Hello and welcome to Hobby Vlog number 180. Now this week the impending deadlines really bit and kicked me back into gear so I've made a lot of progress on the two projects which I have to finish in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so that is the bottom table for Articon which I actually have a month for but I don't care I want to get it done um, and the entry for TCU which I do only have two weeks to do. So yeah those are the two projects. Uh, still no hobbying with Rosie, still doing lots of other things with her and not doing hobbying. Um, I've got more thoughts about that chocolate factory. Uh, it may change uh, and I may pick up a new project with Rosie and start that a bit later in a different way, but you'll have to wait for those thoughts to uh, completely finish before I give you a full update. Um, other than that, I really hope that you enjoy this video. It's been nice this week to get back to doing a little bit more hobby. I've dragged myself off Tawny, which has still been taking a lot of my time. Uh, so just crazy busy at the moment, but we're getting there and soon enough these two projects will be done and then I can start to relax a little bit more until the next time I put myself under too much pressure. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. It's uh, awesome to have you here. Uh, do let me know what you think in the comments below. I reply to every single one of them and they really do inspire me. Um, I've been gone, gone back to doing some videos on Tuesdays as well, uh, which is really odd that no one comments on them. So um, if you watch them, do, do comment on those as well. <laughs> I get loads of comments on my vlogs and none on my Tuesday videos at the moment, which is very strange. Don't know what's going on there. Anyway, enough rambling. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again at the end. So now we're going to glue it on, aren't we? Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I will put some white glue, PVA glue, yeah. in the little divot. And then you, if you turn it around like that, it goes in like that. Sit it down on top. That's it. And when that has gone off, which will be tomorrow, then that will be done. It's been months since we worked on this, hasn't it? I was just editing the video today and I realised, I was editing the video, I realised, and I went and looked, and we didn't have the stone there. So, yeah. Right, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, thanks to Luck Dog, who commented on my last vlog and pointed out that I should have taken some masking off of this area as well. And now it has been weeks. So I hope it will come off right without damaging it. It really should have been taken off at the same time. And I t totally and utterly made a mistake. But it looks like it's coming off all right, even after weeks it's peeling off okay. So let's see how well I can get this removed. There we are, look at that. So even if you forget and you leave it for weeks and weeks, <laughs> That mask, that liquid mask still comes off. And thank you very much to Lack Dog for spotting that and saying, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, I'm sure you masked off the other window. <laughs> I am forgetful. So we've about three weeks to go until I need to finish this. What I ordered arrived. So we have a load more of the platforms, which is really cool, including some that have already been made up to double height and whatever, which is gonna make it really fun. And then I haven't actually opened this yet. So I'm gonna have a look inside and see what's in here. We have loads more on sprues, including a load more goblins. We have dice. I forgot that in my box, I actually did the uh, separators myself, one of the earliest things I did. So uh, yeah, Ooh, that doesn't want to open. Then we've got another goblin king. We've got some dice and some more miniatures. It smells a bit funny. Always funny when you get things from other people's houses. I think they're probably the rest of Foreign's company. No, goblins. And then another of those books. So that's pretty cool, a load of stuff there. Which I will add into my terrain. And then here we have three boxes of the uh, of the Goblin Town set. So loads and loads and loads. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm gonna clean up, wash and assemble all of the terrain. Um, we'll put it onto a four by four table, work out where I want things to go. Um, in terms of surrounds, I'm gonna do a bunch of rocks um, and uh, that's basically gonna be it. So these will be going from rocks. Um, so, so basically the idea will be, this will be on a base with a rock and a rock or maybe a gap 
or what have you. Um, this one has actually been built already on a slope, so I could potentially have like a rock face coming down here. Um, and then it will be able to be placed around the table as a playable Goblin Town set. So let's see if I can get it done. I've got 21 days from the date of recording this before the deadline of this project. And I haven't started at all, really. I have started painting up my go Goblin King, but apart from that, I've not started. So, yeah, yeah. if I get time, I'll do it. If I don't, then I'll shrug. That was an epic uh, session of clipping, cleaning up, and then washing all these sprues of Goblin Town scenery. I've done them all now. So that is um, one sprue from the normal box and three of the additional uh, Goblin Town uh, scenery sprues. So uh, hopefully there's enough there. Uh, of course, I do already have, if I zoom come over here quickly, I do have this, which is also already assembled, which is another box of the Goblin Town scenery, the extra box. And then over here, I have the stuff that came in the first ever box that I bought. So I've got quite a lot to go on, um, but I've got now I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'm going to start working out how things are going to sit and uh, probably what I'm going to do, the way I'm going to work this is I'm probably going to uh, get it all onto bases, get it all onto um, the, get the bases made up, uh, get, it, get it all glued together um, and then paint it um, once I've got the bases and know where roughly where everything's going to go because I haven't worked out yet how I'm going to glue it together and of course if we go back to the first batch well, you can see that I've uh, not bothered to keep anything organized, really. I'm just going to make it up randomly. I've already got one set that's basically made up in the way that uh, the instructions say. So these are all going to get put together, maybe even cut to pieces and snipped and what have you, and really made into something totally custom. So I need to uh, get the base done first, uh, get the, all of the rocks and what have you, and, and get the layout done before I can really start to uh, paint and glue them together. So that's going to be the next thing. So I'll leave that to dry overnight um, and then uh, we'll put this onto a 4x4 table and work out roughly how it's all going to lay out. Big job this. I hope I get it done in time. Well, there's a box full of lots and lots of plastic. All of the sprues for Goblin Town that I've got. So what I'm going to do now is use this 4x4 table to plan out the layout. Now, I know a lot of people would probably do a drawing, but I'm just not smart enough in with my art for that. So what we're going to do is pull out all of the bits and uh, then arrange it and, and work out roughly where things are going to go. Find out I've bought way too much. Find out some of it is broken. Oops, that needs to be glued back together. That won't be too hard though. And then once I've got a plan of where things are going to go, um, I will start to work out what things are going on, what bases, what rocks are going to go, how high we're going to go. Um, my, my idea for the table uh, is to have the Goblin King um, kind of like at one edge on the corner, so uh, over here, um, and then platforms coming towards him, and then platforms going away uh, for a chase sequence. But I want it to be quite well um, joined together. I don't want it to be too... Uh, too, too much of just a, a, a single path of the only way to get around it. So I want things to kind of join together. So that's the idea anyway of what I've got. So if you think about that first scene when they're in Goblin Town, when the Goblin King's singing, that's kind of the, the idea I've got. Um, and also the, a little bit of a way for them to escape and for goblins to converge. Because who knows, might even manage to get a game on this. Anyway, let's get all the sprues out and uh, see what we've got. Well, I think you can agree that I've got a lot of it. <laughs> uh, don't, don't quite cover the entire table uh, without any gaps, but it gets pretty close. Uh, so, but that means I'm going to be able to have some good gaps, some good voids, um, and maybe have a couple of like stepped um, areas. But it is going to take a little bit of planning. Um, I hopefully don't run out of time. Don't have very much time left on this project, actually, because we're going to need to make sure that where we're going to need to keep things at a regular height so um, things can, so that the tiles can, or the, they're not going to be tiles, so that the scatter pieces can butt together. So if we've got an end here and an end here, they're not off on a height basis, they actually can meet. So we have to make sure that we're good with that. However, I am pretty happy with the amount we've got. I think I'm going to be able to achieve my vision, hopefully. It is a bit scary when you look at that and wonder whether you've got enough. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, it is what it is. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll now, off camera, because this is going to take me a day or two, uh, put together, try to work out roughly an arrangement, get some blocks of XPS and kind of mock it out. And I'll bring you along maybe for part of that, uh, but mostly I'll do it off camera and uh, we'll see what we end up with after I've finished having a play. I've just been down and cut out three more shapes. These I will now bevel with my um, with my tool, with, with my sanding tool, and uh, just to smooth the edges. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one of these as a swampy area, and two with some rocks on it. So yeah, so I'll just get them prepared. You can see they're, they've literally just come off the uh, off the jigsaw. I managed to uh, get my little jigsaw mount working, which is really really cool. And if I remember, I'll pop a picture of it on the screen but yeah just so that the jigsaw mounts underneath and you're moving the wood rather than moving the jigsaw it was a, it's a good thing didn't get it quite right got a little bit of tweaking to do before i use it again next but it worked really well for these and was much cleaner and more efficient so anyway, yeah i'll get these sanded down with my dremel get them painted black and then bring you along for beginning to build up as i said both a swampy area and a couple of rocky areas um, I think that's going to be the swamp, and I think these are going to be the rocky areas. So yeah, need to make some progress on this. Good. So this tree really does need to be painted a little bit more similarly to the other trees. So I'm just going to come along, slap a load of black paint on it, and uh, then bring it down with the greys and the and the other colours because it just wasn't going to look right. I don't think not being similar. So yeah, a little bit of double work, but never mind. I learned a bit while I was doing the previous effort. Um, so it was not a total waste. Uh, but yeah, so I'll just get this painted gray uh, after I've done the black, I'll wait for the black to dry, it won't take very long. Um, and then we'll uh, We'll do the next step. I'll bring you back when I come to the next step, which is probably going to be those bases that I made this morning, um, which have now started to be painted as well. Sprayed them black. So, uh, yeah, I'll bring those upstairs later and possibly get some more done. So I'll bring you along for that, but I'm rambling now, so I'll stop nattering and see you in the next clip. Right, so I'm not entirely sure when the uh, microphone cut out then, so probably maybe the previous clip will have gone into music. But basically what I was saying is that's been glued down with PVA, and this I'm going to trim down um, to, uh, to a shape so that I can get this so that it's at an angle, so that models can stand on top of it, and then I'll bring you along when I get to that, but I'm going to do that off camera, going to get this, going to get this all cut and, and glued in place with my grabby glue. But these are stuck down just normally, um, and when they're painted, they'll look just like a like a rocky kind of terrain, like a, a rough terrain. They're not going to cause very much of a obstruction of line of sight. Whereas the plan for this one is that it will. Um, so yeah, I don't know how much of the previous clip got lost. I just noticed at the end of it, that the, uh, the the battery light was off on the on the wireless receiver, which is a bit of a pain. So hopefully, I didn't lose too much because I said lots of interesting things. But if I did, sorry, all you've got will have been this clip probably, because I'll probably not show you the other one. Um, but yeah, so if I don't show you the other one, I have my big tray of wood, which I collected from firewood, um, and I'm making use of that to make these rocks, and I'll fill in the gaps with modelling compound. There we are, that's the uh, Cliff Notes version of the previous three and a half minute clip. <laughs> anyway, get this dried, bring you back when I come to, do, when I come to glue this all in place. Right, so I've done a little bit of a charging of batteries just in case it was a battery that went, uh, which was why the, the previous clip was a bit bad. I'm keeping my eyes absolutely focused on the little blue light, let me know whether it's taking audio or not. Um, and uh, I've also, I just ended up snapping it and using my fingers to trim it down. But you can see here that this um, fits really nicely along the edge of this, um, of, of this piece of wood um, and will balancing quite nicely there. So what I'm going to do um, is run a bead along the bottom of this piece. Now I always used to use expanding foam glue to stick this. So the real, exp the uh, which, which works really well. 
But I don't have any anymore, and I don't buy it anymore because I like this stuff. So, yeah, so we're going to look to stick that in there. Put some on the top here. Do the same kind of thing right there on the base. I will be putting a load of um, extra scenery around this, so this will get covered up, so don't worry. And then we're going to marry that in there, glue that there, and that should be good. So when that's dried, and I'll leave it overnight, when that's dried I'll come in with some modelling compound, fill in these rough gaps. Um, I might need to then later, once it's all dried, just sand this bit here with my Dremel, but that's fine. That will be a really nice line of sight blocking but still accessible to go up um, rock for the for the for the train so i'm really pleased with how that's worked out so I put that to one side and the next thing that i'm going to work on is going to be this which is my uh, swampy area so that's going to be slightly different so i will wash my hands get myself ready and uh, show you how that's going to work Right, we're going back to some of the very earliest materials ever bought. I've had these uh, pots of paint for so long and they're still going. <laughs> it's incredible, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint um, pretty much, not all over, but pretty much all over, um, a blue and a green mix. So we'll slap some blue on, we'll slap some green on. And the idea here is to get a bit of a kind of... Um, to get it to look like uh, a bit of a, a boggy area. Now I'll be covering over some of this with my um, with, with terrain, with scenic materials and what have you. So not all of this area is going to be boggy. Uh, I'm just doing this because um, I don't because I don't know exactly where I want to have have boggy. So anywhere I want boggy, I will not put scenery. Anywhere I do want boggy, I will leave. And then I can apply my uh, clear silicon stuff to give watery effects and it will look really nice. So it's a really simple technique, doesn't take long as you can see, but it works really well. You can mix in browns and other, other colours if you want, but I think for, for the, what I'm looking for here, I think that is going to be perfect. So it's not, uh, maybe a little bit more green. There we are. So it's not a difficult process, as I say. Um, just kind of do it until you're happy with the with the textures you're getting with your paint. Uh, but when that dries, I'll, show, well, I'll leave that overnight. When that dries, uh, next up, what we'll do is we will build the. Um, is that warping? I hope it's not. Um, shouldn't be because I sealed it. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll build up around the edge with some texture, and then we'll put some tufts and what have you. Um, and I'll make use of my clear silicon to put little little bits of water effect. Anyway, let that dry. Well this dried nicely overnight or set nice overnight. So what I've done here is mixed up some modeling compound and uh, I'm going to fill in the gaps and uh, just make it so that it looks like rock. Uh, I might take a couple of mixes to do this. I'm not going to bother shoving it all the way in underneath the idea here is uh, it doesn't really matter if it's a bit hollow the idea here is just to fill these gaps in and then when it's dried i can paint it and it will be a bit more like it'll look like really look like rock so uh yeah looks like i'm gonna need to do another mix for this but you can see how well this works so I'll get this done, do another mix, get that all filled in and wait for that to set and then it will be time to do the painting. So um, I will definitely bring you along when I get to that. But yeah, I massively undermixed, didn't I? But makes a change from over mixing, which is what I normally do. There we are. So just try to kind of make the modeling compound have a little bit of a similar kind of like 
texture to the wood. If you did want to uh, fill in the underneath, what you could do is screw some paper up and shove it in there just so that then you're only filling over the paper. So what I might actually do is when I come to do the this bit here, when I do another mix, I might do that. So I'll, I'll turn the camera on and show you how to do that because I've actually put quite a lot of modeling compound at this end, which I didn't need to do because I could have filled it with paper. So I'll turn the camera on when I get to that. Okay, so here we have some packing paper. And what I'm going to do is just slip it in under here, like that. <clears throat> and then when I do the next bit of modelling compound, I will use less modelling compound. And yes, I am that tight. But hey, you can't take it with you, you may as well use it, but you may as well not waste it either. So anyway, so I'll mix that modelling compound up now and then uh, finish this off. And then I have the other base and I'm just going to put a little bit of modelling compound around the edges of this as well, just to smooth the transition from the rock to the, uh, to the ground. Not all the way around it, just where there's gaps. Because obviously when I put my sifted sand on, that will also act to, uh, to fill that gap. So yeah, there we are, a tiny bit more water. And get that applied. And that, as you can see, really does reduce the amount of compound that's needed. So now I'm really wishing I'd done it at that end. But anyway, at least it's a learning. Again, I'm always learning. I'm always learning the same tips over and over again every time I work on things. <laughs> There we are. So I'll smooth that out a bit more when it's a little bit dry. Fill these gaps in at the edge. And that's going to look really cool, I think. All right, I'll bring you back when that's all dried and when we're coming to the painting stage. All right, so that dried nicely. As you can see, we've got this interesting kind of watery effect, a little bit of depth. Though, of course, I may end up um, lightening that in little places just to make it look a little bit less deep. But what I'm going to do now is I've got two buckets over on the on the left hand side here. These have gravel in them of different siftings. So this is what I call number three. This is what I call number one, which is the smallest one that I do. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build up the edges of this with some texture. Uh, and I will use a little bit of both types of stone. And what I will also do, as I say, is I will also build up little kind of patches in places throughout the marsh. I don't want this to look too much like a lake. It's not a lake, it's a marsh. Um, so yeah, so I'll also kind of put some, uh, some bits in the middle. And then when that's dried, um, that will then allow me to put tufts and grass and reeds and all sorts of things to really sell this as being a, uh, a marshy area. Now, of course, it's a marshy area which is on top of a rise, which isn't very realistic, but you can't do everything with wargaming terrain. Um, if this was a model railway, you'd be doing this as a dip, but that's not really possible. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's going to be enough glue for now. So what I shall do is bring my big stones over first and just put a couple of those on. This is just to put a little bit of variety more than anything. And I will be sealing these in, so don't worry. I'm not just going to be doing one layer of PVA, particularly because this is for a tournament, so it's going to be getting some heavy use. A little bit more glue needed in that corner there, I think. There we are. More there, and then once I've got a few of these in, I will then bring along my smaller sifted stuff and scatter that over the top and just let it fall straight off like that. There we are. So now, as you can see, we have a bit of texture. We have some islands in the in the. Uh, in the swamp and what I'll do now is I'll finish off the other half of it and let that dry and then paint the PVA over the top again to seal it on and make sure it doesn't fall off. So yeah, there we are. 
I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. Next thing you need to do for these is the same thing as I've just done for the swampy base, which is putting on my sand. So again, same technique, I'll PVA, water down PVA onto the base. I'm not going to put any bigger stones on, I don't think. I might change my mind. But yeah, so we'll put that down. And then I've got my bucket at the back. Chuck some sand on. Shake it off. And there we have it. So I'll do that on all of the base of these and then let them to dry and then seal them over with more PVA when that's done. So uh, yeah, cracking on with these now. Well, as I was doing the other ones, I also put the sand base onto these little mini rocks. And what I'm coming to do now is seal them off. And so I thought I'd film because uh, I thought I'd just show that I'm actually going to seal not just the sand, but also the rocks. So a nice thick coat of the PVA over absolutely everything. And that will make it rock hard and mean that when it's used at the at the tournament it won't fall apart. Uh, I've already done the second coat on all the other stuff that I did so they are all sealed so I've just got to do this and then we'll come along and do the painting and do the flocking and then this project will be done. So we're actually rushing to conclusion now which is good because we're also rushing towards when I need to pack it into a box and take it to James. Anyway, I'll get this all painted up um, with the PVA and then bring you back when I get to the next step to show you what the next step will be, whatever that is, whatever I decide to do. So yeah, you can put this on really thick because uh, it does dry clear. So don't worry that it looks very white at the moment. If you use good quality PVA, it will dry totally clear. So there we are, that's one done. I'll do the other one and bring you back very shortly for the next step. Oh, I've finished putting together all of these Gundabad orcs, which actually didn't end up being too bad. It was more psychological than anything that I wasn't doing it. But anyway, so I've done that. And I've also uh, been working on putting together the actual, um, the actual bear figure. Now, if we have a look at this and how that would stand naturally, you can see that he fills the whole of the base and is very much leant forwards. And what I want is for him to be stood much more upright, which gives me a lot more space for, for example, me to have a Gundabad Orc running in here and the Gundabad Orc here trying to poke him and one of these Gundabad Orcs in his hand. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to cut a wedge out from the back of both of his legs and then I can fold the legs back which will mean that the feet will come down and so he will be stood more upright. So I've got a razor saw. I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to do actually fully on camera, but what I decided to do basically, I've not glued the other arm on yet. I decided to glue everything else on. Uh, the other arm I will decide once I see how he stands and it will probably be at the very least pulled out a lot more like this or maybe even um, uh, turned around or what have you. So that will require a little bit more thought. Um, so yeah, so what we'll do is we'll come in here um, with the razor saw and I'll put some music on while I'm doing this because this will take me a minute. Well, there we are. That took me about five minutes in total and probably didn't come out very well. And I did manage to uh, disconnect this arm, but whatever, that doesn't really matter. So I might work on it a little bit more, but you can see 
the concept of what I'm doing there, if I can get that into focus, there we are. See the concept of what I'm doing there is pretty cool. So it was out here and now it's going to be there. So yeah, so and that will then mean that he is stood up pretty, pretty upright, which is what I want. So I'll glue that. Actually, that's probably perfect. I'll be able to glue that and then I can work on the other leg or I might be able to put that, the other leg standing on someone. That could be even better. I could have a corpse underneath. Yeah, he's mid stomp. If I leave it like that. There we are. How about that? That wasn't in shot. Sorry. So uh, yeah, that looks great. Right. So I'm going to glue that. And then I don't have to cut their leg and I can, he's potentially in mid stomp. I can maybe even do him on one leg like that, uh, which might be a bit unstable. I'll have a play around with it. But yeah, that worked really well. Really pleased on that. And then what I'll be doing is uh, arranging all of the uh, other models around him. Um, I'll glue that back on. I, the, it doesn't fit very well. Um, the, all the super glue is actually still uh, not set inside that hole. Uh, that's not, not not gluing very well that arm so I might need to use a little bit of millipot or green stuff to get that to stay uh, but I'm happy with the position of that arm and then I'll bring you back once I've got this all arranged um, glue probably got it already got the glue down to the base and then I will be working on that final arm to get that positioned right excellent well I've moved through into the uh, games room because it was a little bit uh, awkward in the lounge uh, and I've also realized I've gone through and stared at this several times. I've realised I was overcomplicating things. I don't need things to be absolutely lined up. I just need them to be roughly close enough. Um, and trying to think about how to do it so they absolutely line up, particularly because there's so many different heights and, le of, and levels of this stuff. It just wasn't really working for me. So what I'm going to do, and again, I'm going to do most of this off camera initially, and I'll bring you along when I've made a little bit of progress again. I'm going to make a start with the bits that are already assembled which is this section here and then I've stacked up all the other sections there and I'm just going to roughly work out um, the uh, footprint of each uh, section I'm going to do and then I'm going to have to go and do lots of cutting and sanding which is uh, not my favorite thing um, to get the bases done so I'm going to put these on wooden bases I think um, might change my mind on that but initially I'm going to put them on wooden bases um, and then I can start to carve the um, the foam and fit it all into place uh, relatively quickly hopefully and then I can get to painting because that's then it'll be done uh, so yeah um, I'm just going to be less accurate or worry less about accuracy I try to be as accurate as possible but not freeze myself like I was there trying to be as accurate as I can um, and uh, we'll see what we end up with uh, very excited about this but time is running out well I've made a start and uh, a start is what you need to make and then you can carry on this is how it's going to work so what I've done is I've used the um, hot wire cutter, the Proxon, a little bit to trim off some sections from these big thick chunks of uh, expanded polystyrene. And then I've hacked them down just with the edge of my alpha blade there to make them look like rocks. What you can see here is I've created a little bit of a shelf for this one here, which was pre-assembled and comes with a short and a long leg, which is pretty cool. I'm quite happy with that. Might do the same thing again elsewhere. And then this is just resting at the moment. It will fall down if I move it. Um, and then I'm going to put a T junction, make that into a T junction there. So what will happen is, is the base will, will basically huh, be quite close to the edge of this rock and quite close to the edge of the um, <coughs> of, of these uprights and then I'll be able to stick everything down and it'll be secure and then here I've started another one another little idea which is just a flat top which has a bit of a um, uh, which, which will have this bit of walkway on it um, and then that would be able to potentially go there um, and that will be jumpable so it'll be a jump test but it still will be passable um, and you can see how it's starting to be able to kind of all link up so you could even put that there and that'll be jumpable um, and you're starting to make a really nice table so that's the plan so i'm going to carry on with that um, when i i've got to stop now but when i come to do the next one i'll bring you along to show you how i go about carving it and cutting it uh, i just wanted to do that off camera so i could uh, come up with my ideas i'm very happy with how that's looking um, but i'll turn the camera on when i do the next one but i've got to stop now unfortunately because yeah i'm running out of time today all right now these are all dried what i'm going to do is just come along with some neat black house paint and slap that all over these um, and also probably what i'll end up doing is painting all of the rest of the base um, sand with the black 
One of the reasons I do this is that I developed this technique when I was working on my stupidly large lake project. But it works really nicely to come from a black base and then dry brush your tone um, onto it for your for your soil as well as for your rocks. It works really, really nicely. So um, I may very well end up doing that, but yeah, right now, just going to focus on the rocks um, and then I'll have a think about whether I'm going to do the do the sand. But it doesn't take very long when this is dried. I'll be able to come along and uh, dry brush up and bring all the highlights out and do everything I need to do to make this look amazing. And then the project will be done, which is a relief for a while there, mainly because of uh, motivation or whatever you want to call it. I was wondering if I was even going to finish this, but I've suddenly in the last couple of days burst into energy, and burst into movement, and uh, it was always not that bad of a job, it just needed to be done. The only way a job doesn't get done is if you never start it. How about that? Anyway, there we are. So that's them painted up, ready for dry brushing when, when the black paint's painted, and I'll have a think now about whether I'm going to paint the rest of them, like uh, I might paint this, uh, um, I paint these bits black and then I can come along and dry brush them and really pick out the details. So I think I might do that. Um, and also I've got the sand on the bases of the trees um, and also on the rock, on, well, on the buildings to do as well. So uh, yeah, I might very well come along and paint these black um, and then uh, I'll do the dry brushing all at once. But now we're at the stage where everything is relatively at the same stage, which is where it starts to move fast because you can really start to batch things up. All right, so this is all dried. So what I'm now going to do is the dry brushing. And I'm going to need to get myself some new light grey paint because that stuff really isn't, isn't looking good. Probably need to get some new dark grey paint as well because this is just totally dried up. But anyway, I'll have to head out to the shops tomorrow. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, try to yeah, get something and then dry brush over the rocks and I'm definitely going to need to go out because yeah that's not ideal is it anyway so I'll dry brush the rocks the other thing that I'm going to do and I'll do the I'll finish that off off camera is I'm going to start working on the soil and so the first stage of the soil is a not a massively dry dry brush maybe an overbrush of this chocolate brown which I use so much so I'm going to need to get some um, I'm going to need to get some get a, a little bit of paper to take the worst off actually what I'm going to need to do is give this a good shake so let me just get that done so I just pulled it off the uh, off the shelf without shaking it. That was lucky. Sometimes when I do that, it goes everywhere. There we are, that's better. So, it's not just the medium now. So yeah, we'll take most of the paint off on that. And the good thing with this is it gives a, it doesn't do all of the black, which gives a bit of depth to your soil, um, as opposed to just painting it brown. So yeah, those are the two things that I'm going to do. And then when that's done, and that's going to be done on all the bases, and then when that's done, we can start looking at the, looking at the flocking. <laughs> nice and easy, quick technique to get a nice bit of depth if you're lazy and don't want to do too many, too many different, la different actions. That gives you a really good result, as you can see. So I'm going to get that done on all the bases and I'll bring you back when I get to the next step. So I've just been stood staring at this for a little bit and I've worked out my next shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have it so that this platform here, this large platform, is actually between two sections of rock. So we're going to have something. So basically it's going to be kind of a bit like this. So we're going to have the rock coming up and it's sitting on it and then what I'm probably going to do is extend one side a little bit and have another section uh, of platform coming at an angle about 45 degrees. So what this is going to need me to do is cut out two 
sections, two lumps of rock, and then stick this bit in the middle, and then get another uh, walkway going on the other side. And that'll be quite a nice little bit of, uh, bit of fun, I think. So you'll have a little bit of cover in between the two walkways, and you'll be able to go underneath the, um, underneath this section here, because uh, this will obviously have its platform legs on, like so. So yeah, I think it'll look quite nice and uh, be quite an interesting little feature. So first thing I'm gonna do is work out roughly where to cut and then take this over to the Proxon and do the, the basic cut to make it easier. So um, one of the issues I'm having with this one of the issues I have with this is making it so that things can, can really easily tessellate. Um, so I don't want, I need to have a gap, I need to have the gap between the two wide enough so that a piece like this with long legs can come along and it's going to be not too bad of a jump test. Uh, it's not going to be so high so I should, could also possibly do a little, make a little ladder, uh, but I do want to make sure that that width stays the same stays wide enough. So using this as a template I can make sure uh, that I'll be able to carve that angle up, get the legs in. So that should be that should be okay. Um, so I will just, and I, I'm going to use this side is going to be for my, um, it's going to have the other, the other rock on it, the other, other, other walkway on it. There we are. So something like that. Okay, so I'll go and cut that out on the Proxon, and then what I'll do is once that's done, I will then work out another one. I might be able to do it entirely on this section, which would be nice. So, uh, there we are, and I can carve that down more. So I'll cut both of those sections out of the Proxon now, and then I'll bring you back when I've got my knife out and I'm actually starting to carve and texture the stone effect. Well there we have it. So we have the two blocks and we have the gap in the middle which is pretty cool. Um, I'm umming and ahhing at the moment now <laughs> about whether you're actually ever going to be able to get a miniature underneath there um, or whether I need to make it so that this is removable so that you can which kind of defeats some of the object of what I'm doing so I might not make it so you can go underneath. I might just um, have it so it's a bit of interest and that will mean that I'll be able to drop this a bit lower down so I can move that a bit wider potentially use this shelf to stand on obviously once I've trimmed down this a bit I'll be able to get to the shelf a bit easier um, and that might make it a bit uh, that might make it a little bit more um, so more more uh, look, look better rather than it sitting up so high um, and what I think I'm going to do is put another bit of rock on top of this like I say and then I will be um, looking to put a platform off the edge and this is going to be quite a large central piece obviously. Uh, the other thing to say is um, as I'm working on this I'm realising I'm probably going to end up with at least two tables if I use all of the terrain because uh, yeah there's, there's a lot of it, there's a lot, there's a lot, a huge amount. Anyway so I make use of an off blade like this and it's just a case of kind of hacking away so I'll show you how I work on this smaller piece and then I'll work on this piece off camera because it's a little bit more awkward working on this when you're trying to stay in shot. But basically what you're trying to do is you're going to carve the you're going to carve the corners off like this. And the good thing with wanting to be a rock is that you actually don't want it to be too even. And I have my bin behind me, so I put them straight in the bin. These ones I can't save, unfortunately. Well, I probably could, but I'd end up with so many that I would not have any space for anything else. And then on the sides, you're using it literally just to pull pinches of the material off like this. And once we've done our technique and put all of our... Um, all of our material on it and painted it and what have you this will look like a very effective rough rock edge and before I get people complaining at me that I'm going to cut myself because I'm cutting towards I'm not really cutting I'm pinching and if you don't want to use a knife you could use um, 
uh, like tweezers or whatever to rip chunks out. Unfortunately, there's no way of getting away from doing this towards you. Just because of what the action you're trying to do. So you get a nice effective rock edge and then you're gonna carve the top off. And again, because we're working on a uh, rock, it doesn't have to be neat. There we are. So then you can dig into this a little bit more. Shorten the blade a bit for this bit. Take some divots out if you wish. So be careful of doing them too narrow because otherwise it'll be a bit hard to put the paint in. And then you have quite an effective rock face. So I will work on this side and on the other larger one off camera because it's going to be a little bit safer and easier for me and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get there. So there we are, that's uh, worked out really nicely. Um, I hacked away at it uh, in the same way as I explained. I've got a little bit more to do on this front edge as you can see but I've run out of time now, Rose is awake so I need to go and spend some time with her. Um, so yeah, but I hacked away at that. I've made this so that this sits between the two, which is quite a nice little conceit there. And then what I've decided to do, uh, it changed my mind, rather than having something going at an angle, I've decided to give another access up and across rocks. So I've hacked a ledge out here. Um, I might hack that back a bit further as well, uh, put this in a little bit more, smooth that down. But for now, as I say, I've run out of time. But what I am going to need to do, because it's very, very annoying, is I'm going to need to stick the legs onto the end of these, because they keep falling off and I keep thinking I'm losing them. But uh, So I'm just going to glue those on. But you can see we've got a ledge there, and then I've hacked out, like I've put a couple of little foot um, footings there, um, and that should look well. Now, once I've finished hacking away at this and cutting this up, I think I'm actually going to start making bases for all these and maybe try to stage them through, so not do them all at once. Get these going um, while I continue cutting out more bases for more walkways. So um, I'll bring you along for that, show you how I'm going to do that. They're going to be um, basically a plywood base painted black, and then I'll stick these on in the right place, and then I'll be able to start painting and what have you. So that'll be something that I'll try and get some time to do later today, hopefully, because I really need to crack on with this. But the first thing is, I'm going to stick these legs on just with some super glue. Um, and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. I've decided that I want to uh, have a little bit more rock up here. I think I mentioned about having like line of sight blockers and that'd be a nice line of sight blocker. So I've just carved that out of some more spare foam. What I'm going to do is make use of my grabby glue just to uh, stick that in place. And I'm still working on the rest of this as in getting it carved out. But there's that. I've carved a little bit more out of this step here so that the um, this platform is, is sitting in nicely. Um, and as I said in the previous one, what I'm going to do now, once that's dried and I've finished carving the edge, I'm going to start painting and decorating these. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to work on the next tiles alongside. So, um, yeah, and I do need to get these onto a base. So I'm just going to let that set. It won't take very long. And then I'm going to go down, measure the... Um, measure the base that I need for this, cut it out using my jigsaw, um, stick these on, paint them all black and then come back and I'm probably going to use uh, grout and sand mixture to texture and harden them up before I then glue the actual um, these actual plastic pieces on. So yeah we're making some good progress on these first three sections I've got about 15 more to go. So I've just been down and I've uh, cut my um, plywood and uh, you can see I've done it nice and close. I'm not too worried about organic shapes as such. I'm going to paint them black. Um, the gaps between on this board, the gaps between are not floor. You can't walk on them, so it doesn't matter. Rosie shouts me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to sand down the little bits of splinters and then glue these on with that. But I better go and, better go and see Rosie, um, and I'll do that in the next clip.
Right, so I have sanded down the base of these just with some hand sandpaper. And uh, what I'm going to do now is stick things in place. So the easiest one is obviously going to be this, which just needs to be stuck down flat onto that. And I will once again make use of my grabby glue to do this. So just run a bead around there, like that. And then that can sit down on there and that'll be done. The next easiest one, let's move that out of the way. That's the hard one. The next easiest one is this. So what we have here, I just need to make sure that um, my pieces will balance correctly. But that goes right hard up against the other, the, the feet on this go right up against the base of the rock face. So that will be a good place for it to sit. So we will again, yeah, can put some a bead of glue and uh, stick that in place. Oops. There we are. So just make sure again before I press that down. That's going to be fine. There we are. And the most difficult one is going to be the other one, the final one. So this, there are quite a few dependent parts. So the first thing will be to stick this in place. I hear a rosy heading up. I'm doing this in grabbed moments during my Saturday. And I'm about to go and play with them on the, bal on the balcony while they're trampoline. And I just thought I'd quickly come and get this done so it can start to set. Anyway, there we are. So we've got that. And so what we're gonna do is using this to position both. goes there, it needs to move in quite a lot, and then that sits there, and you can see, there we are, that's where we want that to sit. So I will now press those down nice and hard, and then leave this to set for a little while. Let's make sure that didn't move too much. It didn't. Perfect. There we are. So that's those three ready to have the terrain put on, scenery put on. Um, and I will probably prime up these separately so that I can paint them all together. But that can be a very, very basic paint job on this wood. Um, so yeah, we're starting to make some progress here. Um, I'm going to do quite a, I'm going to do quite a few it's a very simple bases for these. These are probably some of the more advanced, uh, more, more dramatic, um, and I've got some idea for some, for some quite tall ones, which uh, I'm considering how to do them. So um, I, I will probably uh, work on a few more of these type uh, um, off camera and show you what they look like once they're done. You can see the kind of techniques I'm using. There's no point in going over and over it. But when I come to my big ones, my tall ones, I'll definitely be filming that. I've done the next three, and I've actually got two more downstairs, but um, I've run out of good plywood, um, or at least it is accessible good plywood. So I'm gonna have to have a look and see what I can do. But anyway, so I've done one here, which is like a long thin with a bridge, which is quite cool. I've got one here, which is just a flat piece with a lump of rock next to it, which is also cool. And then this is where the Goblin King will be. So I've doubled the size of the Goblin King's platform compared to what um, what it does uh, in, in the pack, or at least I think I have. And then what I've done is I've done this has got two uprights and I'm not putting the uprights on uh, or the legs on on this corner uh, and I'm going to make use of some polystyrene uh, which will be stuck in here um, and that will be, uh, that will support the, um, that middle bit of the, of the platform. 
so they're not glued down yet and there's another little odd bit that's going to go there so I'll glue those down now and then we'll let them set and then we'll get to painting these first six bases probably with as I've said um, with some um, grout mix I think because that will uh, just act also to kind of harden it a bit as well make it a bit more hard wearing so uh, yeah going well so far I'm a bit frustrated about the about my plywood supplies um, it's basically a lot of the stuff I've got downstairs is just warped beyond belief which obviously is a big problem like literally wavy not even close to flat not close to true so uh, yeah that's a bit annoying let's just make sure I've got these in the right place yes I have there we are so that's cool so yeah so I'll let them set and then I'll bring you along for the next step which will be uh, painting them when I when I get to it I might put a few bits of rock in under here actually uh, but just the same sort of thing just some flat bits of rock um, and then this can go over the top just to add a bit of interest more than I think it won't be very obvious but uh, yeah might do that having fun with this now I'm really pleased to be cracking on with it well today I headed out to the hardware shop and I did pick myself up some more uh, grey paint both the dark and the light and what I'm going to do now is come along and just pick out each stone with grey now I'm not going to leave them grey but I want to pick everyone out as grey initially and I'll do other colours afterwards because this is going to I mean they really stand out against the green and uh, it'll just add a little bit of like life to this little piece this is the piece that's going to take the most effort but that's cool so I'm just going to sit here now I won't film it all I'm going to sit here now and just as I say put a little blob of grey on each bit of stone and I'll bring you along for the next step of this very shortly because this will dry very quickly the first ones I've done have already dried so yeah let's get this done a bit tedious but it's not so bad well, you can see that's uh, worked really nicely, little splotches of grey. So what I've got here is I've got a bunch of tufts which I'm going to apply now. So just got a plate just off to out of shot, which I'll put some PVA glue onto. I've not used that plate for ages, it's ages since I've done any tuft work. So yeah, I'm going to use tweezers to place lots of tufts all over this um, I'm probably going to do more than one um, tuft application step this one is going to be for tufts which will be near the edge or where um, in, in the in where the water is going to be because once I've done this then the next step will be flocking and then I'll do um, the water and then like I said I might do some more tufts so I've got serious play and I've got geek gaming tufts and I use tweezers because they're super sticky and it's really annoying to if you uh, get them stuck to your fingers it's really annoying but I use PVA because it will just make a slightly more permanent bond so anyway, I will just get that, keep going on that. I have got some of these, what they call wheat bushes, but they look quite nice as uh, reeds. So I might put a few of them in over here. Um, but these are a little bit different. Actually, no, these ones aren't. These ones are the ones that are sticky. Good. Now, I have some which actually you would need to um, drill a hole, but it's not those ones. So I'll put some reeds in, I'll put these tufts in, and I'll bring you back when I get to the next step. I've got my tufts in, and now, because I'm really want to get this finished what I'm going to do is I've got my shop bought flocks and newly mixed uh, terrain glue that's the words I was looking for getting tired it's come to the end of my evening uh, and I'm just gonna do a basic two color um, covering of the flocks on these so I won't uh, film most of it because it's very repetitive but what we do is we put our 
terrain glue, watered down PVA with a dash of washing up liquid or dish soap. And I do actually just go over the whole thing again. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to put your flock on everything, but I do cover the whole lot. So like that. And then it's a really simple task. Just scatter it on. You don't want to necessarily do it as a golf green. So don't worry about if you miss some. We just scatter some dark on first and then get the light as a highlight and drop that around and then move on and I'll just be doing this for the next probably 40 minutes or so before bed and then I'll have a look and see what that looks like when it's all dried and I can always put a little bit more on if I need to but that's roughly the technique I'm going to go for so and I'm just going to cover all of the, with the uh, uh, open dirt for all of the bases I've done in this same exact way well that went well so yesterday evening I did indeed do all the flocking on all of these I've still got to flock the swamp area uh, which I'll do now uh, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put uh, the seal all this in so just using PVA glue the same PVA glue just come along and paint over the top of it and then when that's dried that will be sealed and it will no longer lift and it'll be really good for gaming on after that I'll do some static grass and other bits and pieces of interest I'm not going to have it as flat as this I'm going to put some uh, bits of like tufts and what have you around the edges but uh, first of all I need to seal it all and as I say just uh, get the uh, flock done on that <clears throat> so I'll get that done I'll bring it back when it's done show what it looks like well there we are back to an hour long video <laughs> back on form uh, I realized as I started editing because I record the intro before I edit that I completely forgot that I did do some hobbying with Rosie so there we are that was a bonus uh, and uh, yeah it was fun to do that little bit with her she was very excited as you could see so I really do need to get back to doing that only a couple more weeks uh, before she heads off on our holidays so uh, yeah I need to do something this week and next week otherwise it'll be it'll be a month before we see her again anyway thank you so much for watching I really hope you've enjoyed this I hope that there's been some things that have been interesting to you let me know what you think in the comments uh, section below I, as I said in the intro again I do love reading them all and they really do inspire me so don't be shy do say hello and uh, thanks for getting this far if you did now i'll wrap up as i'm always saying at the moment if any of you are directly or indirectly impacted by the horrific war in ukraine then my thoughts do go out to you and anyone you know who may be in that situation and to everyone please do stay healthy stay safe and stay well